Once our 20 to 4 then Jonathan said, tell me what to do, and I'll do it. Once our 20 to 5 David answered, tomorrow is the new moon festival, and I'm supposed to eat dinner with your father. But instead, I'll hide in a field until the evening of the next day. Once our 20 to 6 it saw wonders where I am, tell him, David asked me to let him go to his hometown of Bethlehem, so he could take part in a sacrifice his family makes there every year. Once our 20 to 7 if your father says it's all right, then I'm safe. But if he gets angry, you will know he wants to harm me. Once our 20 to 8 be kind to me. After all, it was your idea to promise the Lord that we would always be loyal friends. If I've done anything wrong, kill me yourself, but don't hand me over to your father. Once our 20 to 9 don't worry, Jonathan said. If I find out that my father wants to kill you, I'll certainly let you know. Once our 20 10 how will you do that? David asked. Once our 2011 let's go out to this field, and I'll tell you, Jonathan answered. When they got there, once our 2012 Jonathan said, I swear by the Lord God of Israel, that two days from now I'll know what my father is planning. Of course I'll let you know if he's friendly toward you. Once our 2013 but if he wants to harm you, I promise to tell you and help you escape. And I ask the Lord to punish me severely if I don't keep my promise. I pray that the Lord will bless you, just as he used to bless my father. Once our 2014 Sunday the Lord will wipe out all of your enemies. Then if I'm still alive, please be as kind to me as the Lord has been. But if I'm dead, be kind to my family. Once our 2015. See 2014 once our 2016 Jonathan and David made an agreement that even David's descendants would have to keep. Then Jonathan said, I pray that the Lord will take revenge on your descendants if they break our promise. Once our 2017 Jonathan thought as much of David as he did of himself, so he asked David to promise once more that he would be a loyal friend. Once our 2018 after this Jonathan said, Tomorrow is the new moon festival, and people will wonder where you are, because your place will be empty. Once our 2019 by the day after tomorrow, everyone will think you've been gone a long time. Then go to the place where you hid before and stay beside going away rock. Once our 2020 I'll shoot three arrows at a target off to the side of the rock. Once our 2021 and send my servant to find the arrows. You will know if it's safe to come out by what I tell him. If it is safe, I swear by the living Lord that I'll say, the arrows are on this side of you. Pick them up. Once are 2022 20, but if it isn't safe, I'll say to the boy, the arrows are far there away. This will mean that the Lord wants you to leave, and you must go. Once are 2023 20, but he will always watch us to make sure that we keep the promise we made to each other. Once our 2024 20, so David hid there in the field. During the new moon festival, Saul sat down to eat once our 2025 20, by the wall, just as he always did. Jonathan sat across from him, and Abner sat next to him. But David's place was empty. Once our 2026 20, Saul didn't say anything that day, because he was thinking, something must have happened to make David unfit to be at the festival. Yes, something must have happened. Once our 2027 the day after the new moon festival, when David's place was still empty, Saul asked Jonathan, why hasn't that son of Jesse come to eat with us? He wasn't here yesterday, and he still isn't here today. Once our 2028 Jonathan answered, the reason David hasn't come to eat with you is that he begged me to let him go to Bethlehem. He said, please let me go. My family is offering a sacrifice, and my brother told me I have to be there. Do me this favor and let me slip away to see my brothers. Once our 2029, 20, see 2028 20, once our 2030 Saul was furious with Jonathan and yelled, You're no son of mine, you traitor. I know you've chosen to be loyal to that son of Jesse. You should be ashamed of yourself. And your own mother should be ashamed that you were ever born. Once our 2031 you'll never be safe, and your kingdom will be in danger as long as that son of Jesse is alive. Turn him over to me now. 
He deserves to die. Once our 2032 why do you want to kill David? Jonathan asked. What has he done? Once our 2033 Saul threw his spear at Jonathan and tried to kill him. Then Jonathan was sure that his father really did want to kill David. Once our 2034 Jonathan was angry that his father had insulted David so terribly. He got up, left the table, and didn't eat anything all that day. Once our 2035 in the morning, Jonathan went out to the field to meet David. He took a servant boy along once our 2036 and told him, When I shoot the arrows, you run and find them for me. The boy started running, and Jonathan shot an arrow so that it would go beyond him. Once our 2037 when the boy got near the place where the arrow had landed, Jonathan shouted, Isn't the arrow on past you? Once our 2038 Jonathan shouted to him again, Hurry up! Don't stop! The boy picked up the arrows and brought them back to Jonathan. Once our 2039 but he had no idea about what was going on. Only Jonathan and David knew. Once our 2040 Jonathan gave his weapons to the boy and told him, take these back into town. Once our 2041 after the boy had gone, David got up from beside the mound and bowed very low three times. Then he and Jonathan kissed each other and cried, but David cried louder. Once our 2042 Jonathan said, take care of yourself. And remember, we each have asked the Lord to watch and make sure that we and our descendants keep our promise forever. David left and Jonathan went back to town. One Samuel 21 to 115 David went to the city of Nob to see Ahimelech the priest. Ahimelech trembled when he saw him. Why are you alone? He asked. Why is no one with you? 2. The king has sent me on a private matter, David said. He told me not to tell anyone why I am here. I have told my men where to meet me later. 3. Now, what is there to eat? Give me five loaves of bread or anything else you have. 4. We don't have any regular bread, the priest replied. But there is the holy bread which I guess you can have if your young men have not slept with any women recently. 5. Don't worry, David replied. I never allow my men to be with women when they are on a campaign. And since they stay clean even on ordinary trips, how much more on this one? 6. So, since there was no other food available, the priest gave him the holy bread, the bread of the presence that was placed before the Lord in the tabernacle. It had just been replaced that day with fresh bread. 7. Now Doeg the Edomite, Saul's chief herdsman, was there that day for ceremonial purification. 8. David asked to Haimelech, Do you have a spear or sword? The king's business was so urgent that I didn't even have time to grab a weapon. 9. I only have the sword of Goliath the Philistine, whom you killed in the Valley of Elah, the priest replied. It is wrapped in a cloth behind the effort. Take that if you want it, for there is nothing else here. There is nothing like it. David replied. Give it to me. 10. So David escaped from Saul and went to King Lachish of Gath. 11. But Lachish's officers weren't happy about his being there. Isn't this David, the king of the land? They asked. Isn't he the one the people honor with dances, singing? Saul has killed his thousands, and David his ten thousands. 12. David heard these comments and was afraid of what King Lachish might do to him. 13. So he pretended to be insane, scratching on doors and drooling down his beard. 14. Finally, King Lachish said to his men, Must you bring me a madman? 15. We already have enough of them around here. Why should I let someone like this be my guest? Well, as you see, jealousy, survival and loyalty continues to go on in this chapter. David and his men running for their lives, so to speak, to protect themselves, hungry and stuck.
starving, needing of assistance and help, and saw right on their trail. And so is the reality of what does that all that stuff mean? It means that a man who is a born again Christian, a believer, one of God's elect and very elect, have many, many, many struggles to go through. Many, many struggles to go through. Many problems to go through. Many great and small tribulations to go through to accomplish the mission that God has set you on to fulfill His great commission to develop a relationship. Some people, have, one person asked me one time in a letter, like, you know. I don't understand why God needed to have people that He created for a relationship. It just doesn't make any sense. But the fact of the matter is this that a parent and a mother. doesn't need a child, doesn't need a kid, there's no reason for it, for the most part. Although some might argue. The reason why they have kids is because they want kids. And that's the reason why God created us, because He wanted a relationship with us. He wanted children. He doesn't need it, He just wanted it. And so, anyway, so in the battle and the struggle between the devil, the flesh, and the world, good and bad, you're going to go through many, 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 many spiritual starvations. You're going to go through many, many battles against those who seek your head, so to speak. I mean that literally in the foreign countries where it's against the law to even say the name of Jesus Christ or to proselyte, proselyze people about Jesus Christ in America. It's more slick, more uh, Slight and so forth. And the funny thing is, you go back to the, I don't know, the 60, late 60s and 70s, and you got these groups that are going, these hippies and so forth, they're going to be the group of the, going to be the people of fish of the future, and they call police the Gestapo of Los Angeles and so forth. And then, they make progress and they get into power and they start getting in control and they become just as evil and just as wicked as the Gestapo. And so they kind of defeat the purpose of what they're trying to accomplish and they're more harsh and more wicked and more angry and more cold-hearted than the folks before them who were trying to maintain what was right, what was right, moral, and so forth. But either way, in the battle, as we know it's Psalm 2, Psalm 22, and we know that Psalms is not only, you know, Psalms, but it's also prophetic of the fulfillment of the types and shadows of the Old Testament and Christ Jesus of course being the fulfillment of the Old Testament. And we see that in these and you know, we see that in these chapters we're looking at.